amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. Green Top Guideline Number 8 A. It is estimated that around 5% of the pregnant population are offered a choice of invasive prenatal diagnostic tests, most commonly amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling. The type of diagnostic test available and offered is likely to vary depending upon the timing of any initial screening test that is performed. Background and Introduction Amniocentesis is the most common invasive prenatal diagnostic procedure undertaken in the UK. Most amniocentesis are performed to obtain amniotic fluid for karyotyping from 15 weeks or 15 weeks plus onwards. Amniocentesis performed before 15 completed weeks of gestation is referred to as early amniocentesis. Chorionic villus sampling, or CVS, is usually performed between 11, 11 plus, and 13, or 13 plus 6 weeks of gestation, and involves aspiration or biopsy of placental villi. Chorionic villus sampling can be performed using either a transabdominal or a transcervical approach. Rates of miscarriage Women should be informed that the additional risk of miscarriage following amniocentesis is around 1%. Women should be informed that the additional risk of miscarriage following chorionic villus sampling may be slightly higher than that of amniocentesis carried out after 15 weeks gestation. If coating procedure related loss rates lower than 1%, they should carefully evaluate the adequacy of their own follow-up data. There is also increasing evidence that operators who perform procedures frequently have lower miscarriage rates. At what gestation should amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling be carried out? Amniocentesis should be performed after 15 or 15 plus weeks of gestation. Amniocentesis before 14 or 14 plus weeks of gestation, also called early amniocentesis, has a higher fetal loss rate and increased incidence of fetal talipis and respiratory morbidity compared with other procedures. Chorionic villus sampling should not be performed before 10 or 10 plus completed weeks of gestation. Early amniocentesis is not a safe alternative to second trimester amniocentesis because of increased pregnancy loss. Chorionic villus sampling before 11 or 11 plus weeks can be technically difficult to perform owing to a smaller uterus and thinner placenta. What consent is required prior to performing amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling? Written consent should be obtained prior to performing amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling. The use of the Department of Health Consent Form No. 3 is recommended. Written or oral information should include the reason for offering the invasive procedure, the explanation of the type of cytogenetic results which will become available, processes for any long-term sample storage, and quality control. Information should also be provided in relation to indications for seeking medical advice following the test and the need for anti-D post-procedure if the woman is RHD negative. What technique should be used to perform amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling? Needle insertion during amniocentesis and transabdominal chorionic villus sampling should be carried out under simultaneous ultrasound visualization by the practitioner performing the ultrasound guidance. Transplacental passage of the amniocentesis needle should be avoided unless it provides the only safe access to an adequate pool of liquor. Maximum outer needle gauge size of 0.9 mm or 20 gauge should be used to perform amniocentesis.
Clinicians should use the chorionic villus sampling technique with which they are competent using local anesthesia for transabdominal chorionic villus sampling. With ultrasound guidance, the contents of the uterus, particularly the position of the placenta and the umbilical cord insertion, are visualized prior to amniocentesis and a suitable entry point on the mother's abdomen is noted. Continuous visualization of the needle with ultrasound reduces blood staining from 2.4% to 0.8%. Continuous guidance is more likely to avoid maternal bowel injury at needle insertion. The current recommendation for continuous ultrasound control rests on the need to avoid dry and bloody tops principally because the presence of blood may interfere with amniocyte culture. Recent evidence suggests that penetration of the placenta may not be associated with increased complications where continuous ultrasound guidance is used. If a clear pool of amniotic fluid can be reached only by passage through the placenta, then this is the approach of choice. Under these circumstances, placing the needle through the thinnest available part of the placenta is recommended. It is also important to ensure that the placental cord insertion is avoided. Chorionic villus sampling, both transabdominal and transcervical, must be performed under continuous ultrasound control. What is required for training and maintaining good practice in amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling. Operators carrying out unsupervised amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling should be trained to the competencies expected of subspecialty training in maternal and fetal medicine, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists Fetal Medicine Advanced Training Skills Module, or ATSM, or other international equivalent. Clinical skills models, assessment of interaction with patients, and supervised procedures should be an integral part of training. Competency should be maintained by carrying out at least 30 ultrasound guided invasive procedures per annum. Units and operators should carry out continuous audit of frequencies of multiple insertions, failures, bloody tops, and post-procedure losses. Very experienced operators, more than 100 per annum, may have a higher success rate and a lower procedure-related loss rate. Occasional operators who perform a low number of procedures per annum may have increased rates of procedure-related loss. Further opinion should be sought from a more experienced operator if difficulties are anticipated or encountered. Expert opinion suggests that an operator's competence should be reviewed where loss rates appear high and audit should certainly occur where they exceed 4 over 100 consecutive amniocentesis or 8 over 100 chorionic villus sampling. Operator experience as well as technique may be important. Maternal contamination rates are lower when practitioners perform greater numbers of amniocentesis. Studies comparing very experienced practitioners or more than 100 procedures per annum with less experienced practitioners have shown substantial differences in outcome with a 6 to 8 fold increase in loss rates associated with less experience. Competence is best assessed through continuous audit of complications such as the need for second insertion and miscarriage rate. The 95% confidence intervals for complications from experienced operators indicate that second insertion may be acceptable in at most 7 over 100 consecutive amniocentesis cases. Pregnancy loss should not exceed 4 over 100 amniocentesis. Higher numbers of complications may be an unfortunate cluster or consequence of high background risk of miscarriage. 
Nevertheless, where loss rates exceeds this limit, an independent review of the operator's skill should be carried out. Comparable numbers for chorionic villus sampling are different because of the higher background risk of miscarriage. Also, chorionic villus sampling is often performed in the presence of increased nuchal translucency, cystic hygroma, fetal anomalies, or genetic conditions, most of which are associated with a higher spontaneous miscarriage rate, a 3% sampling failure rate, and a 3% pregnancy loss as a gold standard. An audit of practice should be carried out when either 5 sampling failures or 8 miscarriages occur in 100 consecutive cases.